sitting there thinking about the words of the song. Since we do this once a month and we have so much to do with singing and our worship of God, I wanted to point out something to you that we could overlook in the process of our doing only what's authorized by the Bible when it comes to music and, and worship to God. Look with me very quickly to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. You're familiar with this, Ephesians 5:19, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, we have long pointed out that when you consult every verse in all of the New Testament of the Christ relative to the music whereby God is worshipped, then singing is what's designated, it's what's authorized, it's what's specified. But I think sometimes we might in our efforts to do what's right about that and show the emphasis and the authority for it and that it is a, a precise word, a specific word, when it comes to singing, I'd like for us to think a little about what follows thereafter, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, that next part is just as authorized and just uh, as necessary a part as is the actual singing. Sometimes I think we think that the word psalm is that from which the word uh, singing comes. In other words, singing is translating psalms. But in the Greek, it is, uh, uh, reads like this, Adantes kai salmates te cardia. And it simply shows us that the singing comes from the Greek word adantes. Well, then how does the soloing come into it? Because there have been those who said, well, you see, solo in its original word meant like to pluck a hair or to pluck a carpenter's line or to pluck the strings of a string instrument. So they would argue that inherent in the word solo is the playing of an instrument. Therefore, you can use a mechanical instrument. Well, it is true that the word psalmos and the etymology, that is the history of the development of the word, at one time in the Greek did mean that you could twang on an instrument, such as we might say today a guitar. But what they fail to realize is the grammatical uh, usage here. The, script, the um, singing is from, as I said, adantes, not solo. If you'll notice, the translator said singing, then they put the coordinating conjunction chi, which is translated and, making melody in your heart. Well, it's psalmos that translates into making melody in your heart. But it's psalmos that comes uh, in its etymology that has the history of a twanging that goes on or the pulling of a, as you please, the plucking of a stringed instrument. Now, here's where we need to think a little bit. You see, we sing with an instrument any time we sing when we worship God in spirit and in truth. The problem with people is that they got the wrong instrument. It's the heart strings that are plucked. Now, what does that mean to us, an ordinary worship of God, as we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Well, first of all, we sing the truth. We shouldn't sing anything that's not the truth. It should be the truth pertaining to spiritual conduct, to Christian living. And that can cover a multitude of things. But then also we see that it's not the word singing that carries with it the plucking, it's the word psalmos. But where is that making melody taking place? It's in the inward man, it's in the heart. Now there's two things involved in, in scriptural worship and music. It's the actual singing of scriptural words for what psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs were designed to do. But guess what else must be there? The melody's made in the heart. If you're sitting there just saying words and understanding the words, but there's no melody going on in the heart, you haven't obeyed this passage. It takes both of them. Chi is and, the coordinating conjunction. It uh, ties together whatever's before it and whatever's after it. So where one goes, the other one goes. 
So if we are authorized of God to sing and sing only, and we are, then guess what else is necessary for the music to be acceptable to God? The melody must be being plucked. Now, where does that take place? Well, it's in the heart, making melody in the heart. So you see, you can sit here and sing the words, but if your heart's not in it, is the way we say a lot of times, you haven't worshipped God in spirit with another coordinating conjunction, and in truth. So to worship God in spirit when it comes to music is to sing, and to sing only, for that's what's authorized. That's what's specified. But there must be also the specification followed wherein that specification is the melody being made in the heart with the heart strings being plucked. And that's what Paul is saying. You see, all of our worship comes from the inward man. And in the case of singing, due to the nature of singing, you've got then that wonderful statement, Andante Sky, which is the, the conjunction, the, the, the actual singing, Andante Sky, Salmates Te, and you can hear heart, cardia. And that's where it takes place. Heart standing for the inward man from the very seat and core of your being. Now those are the words the Holy Spirit gave the Apostle Paul. Of course, if they mean anything to us, we have to translate them into words in our language that tell us exactly what God via the Spirit had Paul write in writing the part of the New Testament to the church in Ephesus. So when we sing, let's not just get down on the meaning of the words. Let's let it flow from the heart. I'm not just talking about an emotional thing. I'm talking about you have to have the melody because the heart strings must be plucked. Salantes. If the singing is to be what it is. Now think about this. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Apply that then in a general statement to the teaching here of Paul regarding singing. So our minds, as we would say today, must be in it and making the melody as the words scripturally express the thoughts on our minds as we speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. If you're not a Christian right now, then I hope you'll also realize that Paul said to Roman Christians who had become Christians, reminding them of what they did when they became Christians to motivate them to greater service. And he said that God be thanked you've obeyed from the cardia, from the heart, that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants, the doulos, the bondservant. You became a slave by your own choice. You gave up your own will to live as you pleased and will to become a slave to Jesus Christ because you know that's the only way to heaven. And thus they obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine and that's what we want you to do by believing in Christ, repenting of your sins, confessing your faith in the Christ, completing your obedience to the gospel and being immersed in water by the authority of Christ in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Lord, of course, will add you to his church as you're baptized for the remission of sins. As a child of God, I hope all that we do comes from the core of our being, our inward man, our heart, as we obey the truth and put it into practice. But if you've wandered, you need to repent of your sins, and you need to come confessing them and pray God for forgiveness. And as we sing this song, the invitation is offered to you, so why not come if you need while we stand and while we sing?